你嘅屎忽，唔係啊。整狗杯啊！我哋俾大家隆重介绍，今日介绍我哋食料啊！你啊，我哋系食天瓜茶店，食天瓜贵啊！哦，我前边嗰啲都系阿生啊 ！If you didn't know this, there are hundreds of different kinds of spoken Chinese. Give me a sec. Here's a map of Sino-Tibetan language families that I ripped off Wikipedia. It looks like a color blindness test. It looks like a case of eczema. Now these pink and brown chunks are all Sinaitic languages, or in other words, Chinese. And among Sinaitic languages, Mandarin and Cantonese are probably the most well documented and well known. Sorry, Philippines. Many communities in the Sinophonic world adopt the Mandarin as a standardized dialect, as a lingua franca is a matter of unification and practicality. And as a consequence, these other dialects right over here gradually declining in use in the modern world. And I honestly think that's kind of sad because it may not be the most practical at times, but it's a matter of cultural heritage and preservation. I think it's really important to maintain that. Now, I speak Cantonese and Mandarin, albeit very poorly. But my mum's side of the family in Malaysia also speak Hokkien, a Chinese dialect that is frequented amongst a lot of overseas Chinese communities. Okay. <laughs> now, as someone that's heard the dialect a lot as a kid and never really got around to speaking it, I figured, why not? Let's try it. I'm giving myself. Seven, seven days to learn Hokkien and try to speak it with my mom. So here's the big question: Where do I start? So here's the good thing. Technically, I'm not starting from scratch. I'm staying within the same language family. There are two terms in linguistics I want you to know: visual intelligibility, which is how similar two languages or dialects sound, and lexical similarity, the similarities in words and diction between said languages or dialects. Although Cantonese, Mandarin, and Hokkien are mutually unintelligible, there's a high-level lexical similarity between them. Not to mention a shared writing system. Best thing about it, Fujian, where Hokkien originates from, sits effectively in between where Cantonese and Mandarin originate from. Spoken languages often have linguistic similarities if they're located in geographic proximity to one another. Follow enough languages one after another, and you'll find a gradient of languages that are linked by a chain of mutual intelligibility. Think about the jumps between Portuguese to Spanish to French. Some have dubbed this a geographical dialect continuum. Considering this, let's talk strategy. Linguists have generally narrowed down techniques to direct conscious techniques versus indirect subconscious techniques. Polyglots like Siama and YC generally use a mix of both. Considering my time restraint, I think I'm going to go for direct techniques first to give myself a foundation to figure. How to switch between Hokkien and Cantonese and Mandarin? Let's see where I can go from that. I'm struggling. <laughs> Main issue with learning Hokkien online is the fact that all the resources are super inconsistent. What do I mean by inconsistent? Well, you may know in Mandarin Chinese, it is often Romanized in. Pinyin is pretty standard. It was established in mainland China in the 1950s, and it spread throughout the world because it became the main dialect. But before Pinyin became mainstream, Wade Giles and Yale were also common Romanizations. They fell out of use over time. But in other dialects, that didn't exactly happen. There is no consistency because of the fact that linguists, governments, they all use different techniques of Romanizing different sounds. Modern Hokkien has several, including Beiwei Ji. Beiwei Ji is the most common form of romanization for Hokkien. However, there are several other romanizations, including modern literal Taiwanese, probably Beiwei, but I don't even want to pronounce these. I can't. Look, look at these charts. Look at these charts. Why are they so complicated? Worst thing about it, these romanization systems aren't exactly the most intuitional if you're trying to learn from scratch. So I've been using this website called Glossica. It kind of advertises itself as like a pretty good standard platform to learn Taiwanese Hokkien. It's not bad, but I don't know if I'm reading it right. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> Let's take the romanization of numbers as a very quick example. If you go on Wikipedia, there are actually two main columns that you want to pay attention to. There's the Sinocentric literary version, and there's the vernacular version. The Sinocentric or literary system is mostly used for formal academic writing. The vernacular system is how people actually pronounce them, and you can realize, right? You might realize if you look at the damn chart that some of these aren't exactly the same. Is it Liao Ola? Huh? Liu Ola. I don't know which is six. The Sana Sanya version is generally what Glossika uses. Because there are so many different romanizations of Hokkien, I don't know how to pronounce some of the words and whether or not I'm pronouncing them accurately. And so when I tried out using a bit of my Hokkien with my mom the other day, she didn't understand a single word that I said. I had to learn the count from one to ten again. This is the thing, right? For me, it's because I'm used to the Cantonese tones. That's why it's just, it, I, keep, uh, I keep going around. Right? 
so I'm changing methods, listening to music and watching TV. Ah. On second thought, I think I'll skip TV and stick to music instead. I get audible feedback of how I'm supposed to pronounce the words, what kind of sentence structures they use them for, how the tones work as well, and most importantly, how to pronounce the damn words! Hi, okay, so fast forward, uh, seven days have gone to, it's gone, how many days has it been? Uh, I don't know, it's been a few weeks. Uh, I got sick for a week and a half, I made it for a lot of time with a few friends, because I wanted to enjoy my summer like a normal human being. Now here I was typing the rest of my script on my flight back to Singapore, and I've been bopping the Hokkien music throughout. I have a billboard here in my room, so I'm gonna use it. I've developed this rough system to sort of try to develop and retain Hokkien quickly. I made a Cantonese Mandarin Hokkien sound comparison shot. On the chart, I've romanized everything mostly in Pei Wei but I've also used a bit of Tai Lo. It's a romanization system that was birthed from Pei Wei in Taiwan. When I listen to music, I read the lyrics, I compare it to the chart, I try to guess the sound, and if it's wrong, then I remember the correction. So from what I've personally gathered, and my understanding at least from the dialects and from what I've learned so far, again, I'm not a linguist. I'm not a professional, this is just based off my personal observations. This is what I found. Although it bears colloquial similarities to Cantonese, sentence structure and syntax in Hokkien generally has more in parallel with Mandarin. The vowel sounds are also close to the Mandarin, with words in Hokkien generally changing or adding an E, E, and U sound, so what they may sound like Pulo Hua. You can hear it in this song by Crowd Lu. Even with its similarities to Mandarin, it is also important to note the consonant sounds in Hokkien also share more similarities with Cantonese. For instance, words that end with T in Canto often end with T too in Hokkien. In addition, certain sounds and homophones that appear in Cantonese and not in Mandarin do make their appearance in Hokkien. These two characters over here are both pronounced mm, even though they're from different dialects. They both roughly mean don't. You can hear in the song, I I I I I'm struggling, okay? I'm trying, all right? <laughs> this song by Eggplant Egg. I know, weird name, Chinese in English translation, fun. However, these are all merely rules of thumb, and there are plenty of similarities and differences everywhere. Yes. This is pretty good. This is my first time with a billboard, so it's pretty alright. With that said, you've got to remember as well that Hokkien is its own Chinese dialect, basically its own spoken language. So there are plenty of words and diction that's not used in Cantonese and Mandarin that's used in Hokkien. If you go back to that same song, you can hear in one of these lines, it uses the word Ho. This word means give. Cantonese and Mandarin use completely different words for that exact meaning, at least colloquially. Specifically, gay and bay. Because of this, it's also quite important for me to realize whether or not a song is written vernacularly in the words that actually sound like the words that are being pronounced, or if they're written standardized Chinese, where they have a placeholder word that makes more sense in the Mandarin Chinese dialect. Another Hokkien song we can look at from Ek Plan Ek is Long Zhu Hui Ta. This is what you see on Spotify when you hear the beginning of the chorus. Now, some of these characters don't actually sound like the way that they do in Hokkien. If I change the characters to match their sounds, this is what it looks like. Although the meaning of the song doesn't really change, what changes is the sound. The characters that represent each sound are definitely different. And keep this in mind, this is merely scratching the surface of Chinese dialects and the comparisons between all of them, you know? These are only three. There are hundreds. I fully recommend deep diving into this if you have the time. And now, time for the final test. My mum. So what do you want to talk about today? Uh, I think it's the the better way is you speak Putonghua. 
我们讲普通话，嗯、然后。如果你要问我怎么说福建话 ，then I'll try. Otherwise, it looks very funny. I don't even understand what are you talking about the right. Hokkien. So right. you can just speak Putong Hua, then we can change it to Hokkien. Yes,、uh, if if you you if you want me to translate. 本来是看我这段时间学到那些福建话有没有呃真的有进步，本来是那样吧，但是 no no no， 你、嗯、你应该是说啊， uh, 为什么？你会开始对福建话有兴趣？因为看我们现在这个时代，我我们年轻人没有特别讲福建话，没有特别讲。在新加坡不多吗？不多了。其实呢，我小时候 ，I didn't really speak. I hear much Hokkien really spoken to me. Why did you choose not to speak much Hokkien to me, or did I you speak to me and I just didn't really listen? 主要是因为我们住在香港啊， uh, 应该要讲的，你应该是讲广东话。嗯。然后，在你小的时候，你你讲话的速度比较慢。Yeah. 然后，呃，我第一次做妈妈，然后开始怀疑是不是因为给了你太多的，又讲华语，呃，又讲广东话，对，太多压力是吗？不是，我是不是因为这样令你很 confused，、嗯、所以你写语言是不是因此比较慢？然后就 focus 就主要是讲英语作为你主要的呃、uh, 语言。Like 最少 at least I have like one language. Yes. I'm very confident. Yes. Yes.、Right. If our family decided to stay in, let's say, like KL, for example, right, just as a hypothetical, right, would the circumstances be any different? They wouldn't really have Hokkien. 在马来西亚就不一样。啊、uh,。马来西亚的话，你一定要写马来文。嗯。所以你要多写一个语言，变成你要写三个语言：中文、英文跟马来文。嗯。所以这是我妈妈学的，就是学这个三个语言。妈妈开始，我们我为什么会讲福建话？其实是因为我是来自一个小的镇，那个地方叫林梦。然后在我出世的那个年代，我小时候基本上在那一个镇里面的华人都是在讲福建话。就算我的妈妈、我的外公、外婆他们是广东人，是客家人，我们就自然而然的。开始讲福建话，变成我们的每每一天交流的语言。到了进了学校，然后我们才开始学华语。所以我们在这样的环境之下，很自然的我们就学了三个语言。所以我也很困扰，在你上学习的时候，为什么你学的语言比较慢？嗯，是不是因为呃太多了？可是想想一下。其实妈妈从小时候，我们在我们的小镇上，我们在家里也讲福建话，去学校讲华文，然后跟老师讲英文，跟马老师在讲马来文，我们什么语言都都有机会的接触，所以我们也很习惯了，呃，学新的语言。嗯，这个就是我我妈妈成长的环境，然后来到了香港，我开始工作的时候，就是每天这样讲广东话。而很自然的，我也 pick up 了，我也开始说广东话了、嗯。所以，嗯，对我来说，其实主要是看你要不要去说而已。嗯，我不知道你要学福建话，要学用什么方式来学。就好像我之前跟你说的，学学语言最好的，对我来说，像你们这样的年龄，最好的就是听歌，嗯，看戏。而是讲吧，然后，然后，如果你有环境的话，不要不要害不要害羞，就是把它讲出来、嗯，因为你讲错了，你问人家对不对，人家会愿意教你。你你一天不开口说的话，我们都不知道你会还是不会。嗯、所以我觉得，语言就是要把它说出来。然后，现在如果你你去到新加坡的话，你有机会接触更多的福建人，然后说福建话的话，这对你来说是一个很好的机会。As long as you keep talking and talking and talking, even though you may not start in a very good way, but as long as you start speak somewhere, yeah, somewhere, then yeah. you will. Whether that be quick or slow. Yes, and you because by the time you learn a new language, you also learn the culture. You learn there to understand more about the people. Yeah, and I think that's the beauty of 
only, I mean, picking up a new language. You know, after a month of just learning a new Chinese dialect and trying to learn a new Chinese dialect, and hopefully continuing to in the future, I look back now. All my life, I've always been self-conscious of how I spoke Chinese, Mandarin, Cantonese, whatever it be. And、uh, I'm pretty happy that、um, at least now, beginning to care less about my accent, because I think Trevor Noah put it best that. It's not a measure of your intelligence. It is merely you speaking a language with the rules of another language that you are native or comfortable with. Even though as an ethnic Chinese, I should be more comfortable with Chinese, whatever dialect that may be. I'm happy at least I've got some motivation to do it. That's a that's a solemn note to end it on. End it with the karaoke. It's nice. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you、uh, stick around for us. Whatever comes next. I wrote eight scripts this summer. I filmed one. My God. So what else you wanted me to say? Nothing really else. Just more like I don't know. Just speak more Hokkien to me. Yeah. <laughs>